Today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, our helper who guides us. My name is Pastor Jess, and I'm excited about what we get to dive into. We talk about so many things on this show, but we are actually talking about the Holy Spirit this time around. And it was interesting because I heard this story, and I wanted to tell this story right off, about this celebrity that I enjoy, and she had a story online. And she was talking about how she had recently received Christ as her Lord and Savior. And she had this new glow about her, and she had a smile on her face, and, and it was just like that young love, you know? And she goes, this is a love I've never experienced. I never knew what real love was until I actually met Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And as she was talking online, she was like, but I hear about the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? Can someone explain that to me? And does the Holy Spirit have feminine attributes? And, and she started asking all these questions about the Holy Spirit. And I just thought to myself, this is something that we need to talk about. We need to talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about God, we talk about Jesus, but we need to talk about the Holy Spirit. If you look into the book of Acts, Acts actually relates and talks about the Spirit of God so much. In fact, they're guided by the Spirit. The Spirit moves them into different directions, tells them not to go to certain places. The Holy Spirit is guiding and leading them through all of it. And I want us, as Christian women, to know that we have the Holy Spirit on our side, that He's called us, He's ordained us, that He's leading us, He's helping us, and He's guiding us through life. And so I wanted to dive into some of this, and I wanted to talk about how her question was really actually a great question. She asked this question about the Holy Spirit. She said, did the Holy Spirit have some feminine attributes? Because I'm kind of noticing that when people talk about the Holy Spirit, there's this comforter, there's this nurturer side of him, even creative, and she was so right on. Not that God himself is feminine or male or female. The Bible actually says that he is not, but we are created in his image image. Isn't that beautiful? So that there are parts of us as women that are just like Christ because we're made in the image of God. And how does that work? I don't quite know exactly because there are supernatural things that we will only know glimpses of. And once the veil is, you know, removed, we will understand the deep understandings of the things of the word of God. But the most beautiful thing is that we know that we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, building us up, encouraging us. You don't have to live a busted, disgusted life. Isn't that good news? You don't have to live in stuck. You don't have to live in defeated. But because you have the Holy Spirit living on your side and in your world, you can live above reproach. You can, you can overcome what the enemy is throwing at you, all those balls, all those things he tries to bring into our life. You can step out and be all that God has asked you to be. Because when we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, we have the deutimous power of God working in and through us to love on people that are unlovable, to take care of our our families like we've never been able to take care of our families you might feel like where am I missing this God there are parts to me that I don't understand and you can press into the Holy Spirit and he can begin to teach you guide you show you what to do if you don't know how to do something sit with the Creator he'll bring it to your vision and he'll tell you how to move things around you see he's just that good and so let's learn about the Holy Spirit today I don't want us to miss out on this side of who God is a lot of times the church does teach odd things about the Holy Spirit. And I never knew this because I grew up in a church where the Holy Spirit was moving, where the Holy Spirit was free to have his way in the, in the midst of the congregation. I saw people healed. I saw people speaking in tongues. I saw the power of God moving. I actually hear the voice of the Holy Spirit every single day of my life. He is my best friend. And so when I met my husband, and we were very young, him and all his friends came from a different denomination, and I remember us talking about the Holy Spirit. And they were like, well, yes, he's the third part of the Trinity, but he left with the last apostle. And I just was so taken by that. I had never heard that before. And I said, show me in scripture where that is. And nobody could give me scripture for it. And I just didn't understand. And I thought to myself, this is such a distorted way of thinking of the Holy Spirit. He's definitely here. He lives on the inside of us. How can we deny him? And then they would say things like, well, you know, speaking in tongues, that's kind of weird. And that's the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but those are not for today. And I would say, well, actually, I actually speak in tongues myself. I have the heavenly language that the Holy Spirit edifies me with and builds me up in. 
in and, and I can pray things that I don't know that I need to pray and then I can ask the Holy Spirit, what did I just pray? There's such a beautiful relationship between God and us right now. And we need that extra power here on this earth. We can't do this on our own, guys. And so Jesus was so amazing. He knew I had to leave in order to, for you to have a greater one come. And so let's look at this in John 14, 15 through 18. I'm actually gonna use the Amplified Version. It says, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father if he gives you a another helper. Now in the Greek, the word another is quite interesting in this passage because it means another but the same. One besides me in the addition to me, one just like me is how the Greek broke, th broke this down. So Jesus understood that it was God himself, but it was the other part of who God needed to be for us in the times that we're living in now. See, it's a remaining one of two. And same as if Jesus was physically with us. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, but the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us, which means that we are at the right hand of the Father and we are here on this earth. Isn't that quite amazing? And then the verse goes on and it says that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our advocate. He's our intercessor. He's our counselor. Ooh, that's good. He's our strengthener and he's our standby. To be with you forever, the spirit of truth Sometimes we're confused. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. Well, you need to tap into the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is right there, and he has all truth. And then it says, whom the world cannot receive. Why not? Because they don't have ears to hear or hearts to receive, because they don't believe that Jesus is God. And that's why they can't hear. But if you are filled with Jesus and you ask him to come and be the Lord and Savior of your life, you will be able to receive all the Holy Spirit wants to use you in and give to you. They know... But you know him. Ooh, that's good news. Can somebody give me an amen? Because the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be in you. I want to just say to some of you out there that if you're alone and you feel like you've been abandoned and you've been rejected, I'm here to tell you God has not rejected you. He has not abandoned you, that he continually is with you. The word of God says that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And so when you hear those voices tell you that you are alone and that you're not good enough or that people, everyone has left you, I'm here to tell you God hasn't and he's the only one that matters. He loves you and he's got you. Verse 18, it says, I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, bereaved, or helpless. I come back to you. God is always running after us. The Holy Spirit is always prompting us. The Holy Spirit is waiting for us to reach out to him. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in some of these next verses, and he's actually talking to them about things that are to come, some of the end times, and their hearts are getting weary, and they're kind of in concern. Does that kind of sound like today, where we look at the world that we're living in, and then we read the Bible, and we're going, ah, oh, I think we're in the end times. And Jesus is talking to them, and he, he gives an expression of why it's so important to step into this. And so in John 16... Five through seven, it says, but now I go away to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. I want to stop there for a second. When we are in our flesh, when the world is coming at us and we're turning that news on or we're hearing tragedy and trauma and torment, then those things are being robbed from our heart. And the Holy Spirit comes to fill us back up, to strengthen us in these very hard times, that whatever you're going to face, you're not in it alone. The Holy Spirit's got your back. And so here's God saying, your hearts are filled with worry. Your hearts are filled with chaos because of what I've told you. And verse 70 says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. He never lies to us. It is to your advantage that I go away. So Jesus is saying, I have to go away. I have to go to the cross. He's talking about his death. He's talking about the things that are to come. They don't like that. And he says, but I have to go away. For if I do not go away, the helper. Now, in translation, the helper is the advocate, the one who goes on your behalf, the one who goes before you. It is the Holy Spirit here on earth will not come. But if I depart... I will send him to you. That means that there had to be this exchange. Jesus had to go sit at the right hand of the Father and the Holy Spirit came to live, to dwell, and to help us through life. 
So you have that available to you as a Christian. He is the helper, but he does this so beautifully by guiding us. He guides us. He tells us what, we're go what is going to happen. He tells us to check our lives out and don't do that. Don't go there. Don't do the wrong thing. Don't do the right thing. He leads us in love. He leads us in grace as we are good good parents to our children, as we are good husbands and wives to each other, as we are good friends, as we are good students, as we are good single people, however you find yourself, you can step into all God has for you because the Holy Spirit is backing you. Why? Because he's a good father and good parents take care of their children. And God did not leave us alone, but he gave us all that we need. The guide, he guides us in everything. John 16, 13 says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, I love that again, once again, He's the spirit of truth. He comes and he will guide you into all truth. So if the world is telling you, no, this is true. If you're in school right now and your teachers are telling you something that's opposing to the word of God and to what the spirit of God speaks to your heart, no, 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 you listen to the Holy Spirit. You listen to the word of God. As Christians, we, live, we are part of and live in the kingdom of God. We are not part of this world systems. And so that's what the Holy Spirit is showing us. You stay in the kingdom of God. You stay in the path of righteousness. You love each other. You do all that I've commanded you to do. You stay in that. And I am the spirit of truth and I will lead you. I will guide you to that. I will keep you where you need to be. And he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. The Holy Spirit is all authority because he's God. And he will tell you of things to come. I don't know about you, but I want God to speak into my life and tell me what to do and where to go. I was having a conversation with a police officer and he was telling me about a situation that he had experienced in the week that he was working in. And he had said that there was this... Um, man that was going to cause a lot of harm to a group of people. And he was sitting back and waiting and nobody else noticed it but him. And he had this, this unction of like, keep your eye on this guy, something's going on here. And he was able to intercept when this man went to move and hurt this crowd of people. He was able to intercept it and stop the whole thing. And he said, this happens to me all the time, Pastor Jess, but my unsaved fellow police officers always call it a gut feeling. And he goes, this is not a gut feeling. This is the Holy Spirit. And I could not do my job without listening to the Holy Spirit because he knows what I need to look for. He knows what I need to be doing and he knows how to do my job well. And so he is in tune with the Holy Spirit. He invites the Holy Spirit in to guiding him on how to be a police officer and take care of people and protect people. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish I would have known. I know I've asked myself that question, like, oh, I wish I would have known I'd get mad at myself. Or how about this one? Uh, I think the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me something. And it's after the fact. Well, let me tell you about this one time. I went to go visit my family in an out-of-state area, and it's a very small town, and they have a very small airport. In fact, the check-in booth and the check-out booth, you can see the airplanes from it. And as I was visiting them, I always get to the airport two hours early, um, and they were like, don't do that. Spend more time with your family. This is a small airport. You'll get there. You'll be fine. 45 minutes. You'll be really good. I'm like, really? Okay. And then randomly, I went to church that day, and some lady was telling me about her son who had just gone to the airport the day before, the same airport that I was going to be using, and how he got there an hour and 10 minutes before his flight, and he literally did not miss his flight by two minutes. They changed the time of his flight because nobody was coming or going. It was such a small airport, they could change the flight whenever they wanted. And I thought, oh, that's weird. But then everybody else is telling me, like, don't go early, you're fine. So what did I do? I went 45 minutes you know, before my flight. And as my husband and I are walking into the airport, our names are being spoken over the loud PA system that we are missing our flight and we never got to get on that flight. Do you know what happened? I missed picking my kids up from school. I wasn't able to eat properly. It was the longest day of having to go to all these different states that I didn't need to be in. I never got to go directly home the way I should have. Why? Because there was a prompting of the Holy Spirit. And I think back on that now, I'm like, oh, you trying to tell me to get there on time. You were trying to show me what could happen. And the same thing had happened to me. You know, those woulda, shoulda, coulda moments, learn from them because it's the Holy Spirit guiding you so that you don't have to waste time. So you don't have to be in chaos or confusion. So take the Holy Spirit with you 
everywhere you go. And then you'll have supernatural moments in all that you do. You'll have truth working on your behalf. You will be led into all that he needs you to do. You see, the Holy Spirit is active and he's working with us here on this earth. God, the Father, and Jesus are in heaven and the Holy Spirit is working with us here on this earth. Some people would probably say, well, then how do I hear the Holy Spirit like you're talking about? I want to have that experience, that relationship with God. Number one, it takes a little bit of time to learn how to hear the Holy Spirit. If you're a new believer, don't get mad. Don't get frustrated. Just keep pressing in. Get into church. You need to get fed. The more you get fed by your pastor and being with other believers, you're going to be encouraged and you're going to learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit. Um, there's so many different ways. You can pray. You might hear the voice of God in prayer. You might hear the voice of God while you're reading your word. Have you ever read the word and it's just jumping off at you. That's the Holy Spirit teaching you out of his word. You might get a prophetic word from somebody and that is a confirmation of what you've already been feeling. You might have dreams and visions. So there's so many different ways that God moves and tries to speak to us. So be open to the Holy Spirit and allow him to guide your day. I want to leave you with this verse, Romans 8, 12 through 16. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. So deny the flesh. Verse 13, for if you live by it, it dictates and you will die. Those are some serious verses right there. But if the power of the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, see how it's capitalized, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature. You overpower your flesh and your sinful man by putting on the Spirit of God and you're able to override what your flesh wants to tell you to do. And you will live, verse 14, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. That is good news. So you have not received the Spirit that makes you fearful slaves. You are not slave to your sin. You are not slave to how you used to be. You can overcome it. You can become a new creation in Christ Jesus because you have the Holy Spirit. And then it says, instead, you receive God's Spirit when you are adopted, when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For this Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Today, children of the Most High God, allow him to guide you. Allow the Holy Spirit into your life. Invite him in so that you can live every day with him. Some of you don't know who Jesus is, and I want to give you an opportunity to invite him into your heart. He said that there's no way to heaven except through him. It says that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And those that call upon me will have eternal life. And that is Jesus speaking. And so how do you do that? How do you ask Jesus to come into your heart? You have to invite him in. You have to say, I don't want to live the way I've been living. I don't want to be defeated any longer. I want to surrender my life over to Christ. And I want to ask him to come and be the Lord and Savior of my life. And in that process, your sin is completely washed away. You are renewed. You become a new creation in Christ. You couldn't forgive your sins, but only Jesus. Jesus can. And then for eternity, this is just a passing through. You're going to wake up in heaven or hell one day. And so when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you will actually be with him for eternity. And so I want to give you that opportunity. So this is what we're going to do. If you've been running from God instead of to God and you want to get right with God because you've been doing more of your own thing instead of God's thing, I'm talking to you. Let's pray together. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, I'm talking to you. So this is your opportunity. If you've been searching for what is truth, you have just heard truth. And Jesus is calling you home. And it is time to say, okay, God, you are the one true God. And I will commit my life to you. And I will live according to the way that you need me to live here on this earth while my time is here. And so let's pray together, everyone. Bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you right now. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Jesus, Come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me, lead me, and guide me in this new journey. Today is the day that I deny hell, that I leave my past behind, and that I become new in you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross so that I could be free from sin and death. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, we don't want you to just be out there on your own. Find a good church in your hometown. If it's here in the Inland Empire, we'd love to ask you to join us here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. And if you aren't, find a good Bible-believing, Bible-talking church that will tell you the truth about God's Word. And then 
um, I don't want you to be alone in this. So you can go to www.rockchurch.com and push the button, get to know God. And that will trigger us to be able to send you some information about what to do next. Because now that you're saved, what do you do next? Well, we have a book, we have a booklet. It'll tell you the next steps on like what to do now that you're a Christian and how do you read your word. If you need a Bible, let us know. We can get a Bible to you. I love you girls. I can't wait till next time. We'll see you then. Thank you.